ഫോക്കസിംഗ് a bringing of children legacy in children inshallah azza wa jal we hope you will derive maximum benefit and inshallah that you will find it uh, the discourse will be beneficial to you and inshallah that some of the points that we'll discuss will be great importance in terms of how we can uh, try to uh, bring our children according to the proper way and according to what the sharia teaches us before we proceed let us hear about the significance and importance of sending durud sharif upon our beloved master rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the beloved and blessed rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is said when thursday arrives allah azza wa jalla sends angels who have papers made of silver and pens made of gold They write the names of those who recite Durud Sharif on me in abundance on the day of Thursday and the night of Jumu'ah. Sallu 'ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala 'ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala 'alayhi wa sallam. Niyatul mu'min khairun min 'amalihi. The niyat of a believer is even greater than his own action. So two modern pearls number one without good intention no reward is granted for a good deed and that more the more righteous the intention one makes the greater the reward one will attain so let us make good intention that from the beginning of this program till to the end we will have niyat and make co- correct intention that we are viewing and listening to this discourse for the purpose of gaining the pleasure of Allah and his reward and that will share with others whatever we learn from this discourse inshallah sayyiduna sheikh kirmani rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi was a very pious and abstinent worshiper of almighty allah azza wa jal when his daughter reached that marriageable age he rahmatullahi ta'ala received a marriage proposal for her from the king but he rahmatullahi ta'ala ali requested the king to give him 3 days so he then visited different masajid in order to look for a pious young man finally he saw a young man who offered salah in a proper manner the sheikh asked him are you married young man he replied in a negative that Sheikh I'm not married and then Sayyiduna Sheikh Khirmani then said to him would you like to marry the girl that recites the holy Quran offers salah regularly and keeps fasting siyam she is beautiful and well mannered the young man responded who will marry me as he perceived that he was a destitute and he was a person that had very little in terms of material things the sheikh rahmatullahi ta'ala ali replied i will marry my daughter to you take these dirhams and get bread curry and fragrance for one dirham each in this manner sheikh kirmani rahmatullahi ta'ala ali married and performed the nikah of his righteous daughter to him When the bride came to the house of the groom she saw that there was a piece of bread on the flask of water she asked why is this bread here the groom replied 
This is yesterday's stale bread, which I saved for my iftar. Upon hearing this, she began to leave. Seeing this, the groom said, I knew beforehand that Sayyiduna Sheikh Kirimani's daughter would not be able to live with a poor man with meager means like this. The bride replied, I'm going back not because of your destitution, but because of your apparent weakness in Iman, apparent weakness in Allah Azza wa Jal. I'm surprised at my father stated that you are pious and righteous and a man of good habits. Embarrassed, the groom responded, I apologize for this mistake. But the bride said, your mistake is for you to rectify. But unfortunately, I cannot stay in the house where the meal for one time is saved. Now I will either stay here or the bread. The groom immediately gave the bread in charity. Subhanallah. Dearest Madani Channel viewers, perhaps you have noticed how good upbringing Sayyidina Sheikh Kirimani Rahmatullahi Alayhi, who was a renowned Wali Allah and who is a renowned saint of his time, that he gave to his daughter excellent teachings of trust in Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. She did not get angry with her husband for not having more luxuries and facilities and enormous wealth in the home, but rather she made a complaint about the stale bread that her husband saved for iftari because according to her, it was against that you save the food for the next day. It was against trust in Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, as should be the case with a person who is pious and a person that is connected to Allah Azza wa Jal. The princess must have got this madani thought or this beautiful thinking by virtue of the madani or righteous tarbiyat upbringing of her honorable father Sayyiduna Sheikh Kirimani Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, who himself was pious and was abstinent and had absolute total trust in Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Therefore, he taught his child this beautiful upbringing and he taught his daughter the same manner and chose for her a person who would worship Allah so that the blessings of piety and to abstain from indulgence in too much luxury could also be transferred to further generation because if a person himself is righteous, so by virtue of his virtuous deeds, his generation also should benefit. Subhanallah. Dearest Madani Channel viewers, in our society, when we look at our current day-to-day uh, -to -day lives and when we focus on how we ourselves are living in today, you find that parents are extremely negligent in the matters of giving a good upbringing to their children, perhaps, perhaps because they were themselves not well brought up. Of course, how can the, the one who himself is unaware of Sharia's rulings and needs and good upbringing give a good upbringing or encourage others to have a good upbringing? Therefore, when we look at the world we, have, we live in the today's time, those parents who are perceived as liberal when they receive a proposal of marriage for their daughters, as we know, is evident in our communities and in society as a whole, that they would prefer a boy who is rich, who possesses different degrees of sciences and arts, and his life is a modern life. They do not bother about the matters that the boy does not offer even one single solar. He openly commits sins. He openly consumes haram and his career, his approach to life is through haram means. He can, could, he can be even 
be well known in the community and being notorious that he is a person who indulges in haram business, in cheating, etc., and does not even know the necessary rulings of Sharia and Islam. In short, he does not even follow the teachings or the beautiful conduct and teachings of Islam of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. On the other hand, if someone suggests them to marry their daughter to a boy whose income is low, but this particular boy is of, of, of such a nature and conduct that his way of living, his standards of living, his approach to life is one that is in accordance with the teachings of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's in accordance with the Sharia. Ah. He regularly performs his salah and ensures that his salah is performed in the, with the Jamaat at the Masjid. And he should be the one that we should actually look forward to in terms of giving our children or our daughters for hand in marriage. So it is only a person who himself has got a good upbringing, who can fulfill the rights of a wife. It is only a pious person who's brought up in that good family, who comes from that good upbringing, who will become abstinent and religious, who himself is the embodiment of knowledge and practice, and a person that is, sticks to the sunnah, and the teachings of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa whose heart you'd find will be filled with the love of Allah azza wa jal, and the fear of Allah and love of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa and devotion to our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa So remember, good parents do not commit this careless act at all, but rather always look for pious person for nikah of their sisters or their daughters. How critical and how this is of utmost importance in our community and societies if we look at the challenges that we are facing. And if one looks at the problems that we are facing and how difficult things have become and matters have become in our communities as Muslim Ummah. Now, Muft Ahmad Yar Khan Naimi, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, he has stated, when you receive a proposal of your daughter from a righteous and a pious man, bearing high morals and good habits, do not delay the marriage of your young daughter out of greed for wealth and waiting merely for a rich, prosperous match. It should be noted that if people wait for the wealthy, the young men and women will remain unmarried, leading to the spread of zina, fornication, which will bring disgrace upon the family of a woman. As a result, families will fight and kill each other, which is becoming obvious in modern day life. Dearest Madani Channel viewers, children are one of the greatest blessings of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Children are a blessing, subhanallah, which bring about happiness in the home. Righteous children are a blessing which become a support for their parents in their old age. Good children bring about the salvation of their parents ultimately when parents will die. So whenever Almighty Allah Azza wa Jalla blesses a parent with a child, they are over the moon, as we know. But with the arrival of the blessing, of, of this blessing, their trial also begins. So you find it is natural that when a, a baby is born in a home, everybody is excited. There is extreme joy and delight. But now, in the same way, you must realize that so also begins the trial from Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, how to look after this bundle of joy. So it is up to the parents whether or not they succeed in this trial by giving their children a proper Islamic upbringing. 
Remember, children usually follow the habits and character of their parents. If parents follow Sharia strictly and are eager to gain knowledge, their generation also follow the path of righteousness and they bring about salvation, forgiveness, and good name for their parents. But if parents, if parents, Allah, thumma Allah, we seek Allah's refuge. If parents have bad habits, and so the same bad habits can also be found in their children. Therefore, such children do not bring about salvation, but what they bring is destruction. Now, remember, it is the responsibility of both the parents to give a good upbringing to their children, but the father considers himself free from this responsibility, usually after attributing over responsibility to the mother due to earning livelihood. Whereas the wife considers her husband to be the responsible for the bringing of children by giving them the reason of household shows, etc. As a result, their children get out of control and become a trouble for them. Therefore, both the parents should understand their responsibility and should not become heedless or lazy in making their children righteous because children feel a deep long-term effect of whatever they learn in their childhood. The beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa recited the following ayah, Save yourselves and your families from the fire. So the blessed Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in, they humbly requested our beloved master, Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how should we protect our family members from fire? So our beloved Master Aqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Order them to perform the deeds which Allah Azza wa Jalla likes, and prevent them from such deeds which Allah Azza wa Jalla dislikes. The blessed beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also has stated, Teach your children three habits. What? Teach your children three habits. Number one, love for Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number two, love for the Ahli Bayt, the family household of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And number three, education of the Holy Quran. Subhanallah. The, he, the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also is reported to have stated, it is the right of a child upon his father to give him good name and teach him good manners. The beloved Aqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam also is reported to have stated, no father has given his child a gift that is better than good manners. So regarding this blessed hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a great thinker, Mufti Ahmad Yar Khan Naimi rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi stated, good manners mean to make a child pious and abstinent. What else can be a better gift for children than this? These things are helpful not in this world and in the hereafter. Parents should not only make their children rich before departing this life, but they should also make them pious and they will also, as this will help, make them to help them in their graves and earn a reward for good deeds of living children that are given to these deceased parents in the grave, subhanallah. So dearest Madani channel viewers, the need of Islamic education and what is termed Madani Tarbiyat, a proper upbringing of children, we feel today perhaps has not been felt before because nowadays evil acts and the sinful instruments are in abundance everywhere one looks and the tendency to provide children with only worldly education is rapidly increasing. On the other hand, Islamic education for children was given more importance in the past. Perhaps it was due 
to which not only parents but also their children were pious, abstinent and obedient. But now, unfortunately, preference is given to the worldly education. Despite the heavy fees that are paid, all the luxuries and facilities are provided. They are all provided in the schools that only cater for uh, worldly sciences. They can attain and they can have a good career, they have good jobs and they have lots of bank balance. For achieving this purpose, we find even the Muslim Ummah today, this has become the goal of parents in life. They even send their children very far off places only to acquire this knowledge so that the children become people that are wealthy, who earn a lot, who have a very good career, become a very good businessman, a fashionable person, but least is is ever considered when it comes to make the children pious and to become a practicing Muslims. So advising Muslims to give uh, good upbringing to their children, Muft Ahmad Yar Khan Naimi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi stated, it is a common practice. What practice? That amongst the Muslims that they do not take care of manners of their children in their childhood. Poor people allow their children to play with evil boys in the, in the streets and thus they destroy the pious time of their beloved children from getting proper education and good upbringing. Because these children spend most of their time in bad company and only involving themselves in sports and games etc. Now these children are growing up either they tend to become beggars in the streets or do insulting jobs, or spend their life in jails after becoming thieves, robbers, etc. They get these very particular children, the result is that they become a troublesome to their, to their parents, to their families, to their relatives, to the community, etc, etc. So we can understand how important and of paramount importance it is that a good upbringing of children, it brings success for these children in this very world. Not to mention that these children themselves, their goal in life will be to please Allah Azza wa Jalla and His beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And also you find that these particular children will become very respectful to their parents and will become good citizens. And also these particular children will be helpful to their parents when the parents depart this world and ultimately inshallah in the life hereafter on the day of Qiyamah in the life that is to come. So dearest Madani channel viewers, it is a fact that man reaps what he sows. This saying is correct. It does not happen that he sows something else and they reap something else. The same example applies to a child. Parents do not give Islamic upbringing to their children, yet they expect their children will also become pious and abstinent and be obedient. They will become respectable and become good people of good character and behavior in the society when they find that the result is contrary to what they expect, it is too late. It is already done. Now if parents want to try to reform them, they cannot because in the very beginning, the focus and the upbringing of the child wasn't to make him one that is obedient to Allah, one that is pious, one that is close to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So parents who are sick of their spoiled children, if they think about the causes of their children, why they are being spoiled, they will find it is only through, unfortunately, their own mistakes. For instance, if a child does not work or become lazy in work, he takes a day off from school or coaching or reaches late, does not study properly, does not agree to a particular party or does not wear a particular dress, 
Similarly, if he attends other worldly matters with ifs and buts or becomes obstinate, parents take notice of it. What we are saying in modern life, if our children do not dress according to a fashionable way that will make us you know, be praised by worldly people, or they don't attend a particular function that is only uh, to do with uh, about you know showing off and pleasures of this world, then that you find parents, they're very quick to notice this and will take decisive uh, action about this. On the other hand, if a child misses his salah, does not offer it with jamaat, takes a day off from madrasa, boys and girls mixes freely, and they always on their phone, they are always in chat groups, they always uh, in social media, watches haram, dramas, etc. They listen to music, they adopt all these fashionable standards and ways that people are following these days, and they are involved in all those wrong things, then little is done about this, and nobody takes notice, and nobody is worried. If mostly the background of the, of the parents is such that they don't worry, they only worry about worldly matters. So a person came to one school of Islam in Samarkand, Sayyidina Abu Hafs Rahmatullahi Ta'ala and said, My son has beaten me. He Rahmatullahi Ta'ala surprisingly asked, Does a son ever beat his father? That person replied, Yes, it really has happened. So Sayyidina Abu Hafs Rahmatullahi Ta'ala asked the man, Can I ask you something very important? Have you ever given your son proper Islamic education and taught him right manners? Have you taught him the Holy Quran? He again gave everything in a negative reply. He Rahmatullah asked him, then what does he do? The man replied, he always working in the farm. And, and he said, do you know why he has beaten you? He said, no. So said Nafsri said, by taunting him for reformation, I think in the morning when he was going toward to the field, sitting on his donkey, an ox would be in front of him and a dog behind. He does not know what to recite from the Quran, and in such manner, he lost his control and hit you. So we find that the consequences of what we are facing today, or the situation that we find ourselves in today, is mainly due to the manner in which we have brought our children. Dearest Madani Channel viewers, the parents who do not give a good upbringing to their children should feel deeply ashamed and suffer the terrible insult. This is the result. Because if we ourselves don't teach our children how to love the Quran and how to, to follow the commandments of the Quran, how to love Allah Azza wa Jal and how to be close to Allah Azza wa Jal, then the end result is that our children they are growing up in such bad upbringing and you find that the consequences are that they become disrespectful to us and you find that because of such behavior, they become also a pro very big problem for the community and the society at large. Today, feeling very bad with regard to the outcomes of what we see uh, happening around us. All the crying, all the bad uh, things that are happening in our communities and society, all this is because of those children were neglected when they were young. So parents need to, to, to find a way how to, to uh, bring up their children according to the teachings of the Quran according to the beautiful teachings of your beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So alhamdulillahi azza wa jal. This is the, one of the mission of Dawat Islami to revolutionize our homes, to spiritualize our homes, to inspire us in our homes, to ensure that we ourselves in terms of how we bring our children, the ease, that mindset of establishing what Allah Azza wa Jalla wants us in terms of how we bring up our children. This is the aim of Dawat Islami and this is the aim of all these other programs that you have around us to try and change our mindset and our focus and 
to try and make sure that our homes are sweet homes that are full of the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jalla and His beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our homes are the shining example of what a true home should be in terms of true uh, connection with Allah Azza wa Jalla and His beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We conclude by making dua to Almighty Allah Azza wa Jalla that Allah Azza wa Jal blesses us, Allah Azza wa Jal forgive us, and Allah Azza wa Jal give us tawfiq and hidayah that He makes us good parents that will focus the attention of good upbringing of our children according to what Allah Azza wa Jal has ordered us and according to the beautiful teachings of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, according to our deen, according to the Quran, and in a way that the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, Tabi'i Tabi'een, the Awliya Allah Azza wa Jal, the Ulama Haq, how they've brought their children. Ameen. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Islam is the way of life. Islam is the complete way of life. Islam is the way of life. Islam